Hey there, um, so as you can see no guitar, uh, which means we're probably going to do some instructional content that involves me talking, uh, which is, which is, it's been a long time, um, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. So what I thought would be interesting is looking at um, some cool progressive music and the, the patterns that are used in writing it, uh, and some of the ideas that go into it, at least as far as I've managed to analyze, right? So maybe these guys just jammed these riffs out and this is how they happened. Maybe they sat down pen and paper and, and wrote some numbers down and then decided to write riffs around it. But it doesn't really matter uh, as long as it gives you guys some food for thought and some, hopefully, some interest and insight into this kind of music. So the first thing I'd like to look at is a really common uh, gentrification of the most common kind of riff writing pattern, which I would say is a kind of like a, B, A, C kind of thing. So, uh, for an example, here's one of the riffs from Rage Against the Machine's Bomb Track. So, that's a really common kind of riff structure, right? So you have um, an A section, then a fill, then the A section again, then a different fill. So uh, you can write lots of really cool riffs like that, but what I'm kind of interested in is how um, the, the gent community have uh, taken this idea and morphed it a little bit. So the first thing is obviously um, with gent you can do all kinds of funky time signature stuff. Um, in DJ that's kind of kind of the whole point. So uh, the simplest, most kind of uh, obvious idea is that your A section and B section will be different lengths. So a really common pattern is you have an A section, then the B section is slightly longer, then you have the A section again, and then the C section is longer again than the B section was, right? So it's kind of surprising you. Okay, so I have a pretty good example of this uh, for starting. And it's the intro to Pravis by Meshuggah. So uh, it goes one, one, two, one, one, two, three. So you think you've got the hang of it. Then it goes one, one, two, one, one, two, three, four. Right, so a very simple example of something. Uh, the B section grows by a note, and then the C section is two notes longer. So have a listen and bear that in mind and try and really dig the hits. Okay, so uh, hopefully your ears are awake now, so I'm going to give you another example. Um, and I'm just going to tell you it's exactly the same structure over a slightly longer time frame. So this is uh, the middle riff from We're Going In, We're Going Done by Cloud Kicker. So hopefully you were able to hear that same one, one, two, one, one, two, three, then one, one, two, one, one, two, three, four pattern as there was in the Pravis just stretched over a longer period of time. Um, and then when I was looking for more examples of this kind of style, I looked back at um, one of my like favorite things I've ever done for this channel, which was the tapping solo from Oh God by Cloud Kicker. And I realized um, and I thought of the tapping solo, and then I remembered, of course, the riff is as well, and it's this crazy thing where you actually have this pattern going on in two different sets of time signatures at the same time. Um, so if you were comfortable with the last couple, but it was a little bit confusing, 
this is probably where things are going to get super crazy. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's go and listen to it first, and then I'll break it down afterwards. So you should have been able to spot the rhythm guitar was exactly what we've already been talking about, right? So it's a low note, so it's a low B, three hits on a G. Then a low B, six hits on the G. Low B, three hits on a G. Low B, seven hits on a G. So it's that same exact kind of A section, B section is longer, A section, C section is longer again than the B. So that's simple enough. Um, then you've got the tapping solo as well going on in a different set of meters. So let's say um, the rhythm guitar goes, I'm just going to check my notes here so I don't get this wrong, like 4-4, four, 11-8, four, 4-4, four, four, four. and I'll flash the notation up on the screen. Okay, then the lead guitar sections the first one is three bars of 5-8 and a bar of 2-4. So that's that kind of like A, B. Now the 2-4 is an eighth note shorter, right? So it's a little bit different than we talked about, but still the same grand strategy, right? You have an A section, the B section is metrically different. In this case, it's an eighth note shorter, right? Then the next set of uh, lead guitar is the A section again, and then the C section is an eighth note longer than the B section was, right? So that's another bar. Of, so the B section was a bar of 2-4, C section is a bar of 5-8. And so I'll put the notation up. And then I'm going to play you that clip again and I want you to try and focus on the lead guitar this time rather than the rhythm uh, and then try and hear how the whole thing meshes together. So this took uh, a small amount of prep time, but it was really good fun. Um, one of my subscribers was saying he wanted a bit more instructional content, and I agree. Um, the channel's been a bit light on that recently. Uh, it's just been that I've been crazy busy with other stuff. I'm not really teaching very much anymore, and I'm not practicing that much anymore, so I just kind of play for fun, mostly now. Um, that said, if there are riffs, solos, um, artists you'd like me to try and analyze, I can't promise I'll succeed, but I will try and figure it out. Just leave suggestions down in the comments and I will try to eventually get around to them. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>